Hey, welcome back to another episode of Python. And in this one, we're gonna talk about something a little bit more complicated. And we're gonna talk about classes. So what are classes and when do you wanna use them? Well, I'll get into the when we wanna use them in another video, but I just wanna kinda of introduce the concept of a class, show you how you create one, and then kinda of run you through some of the functionality that you can add to classes. So let's dive straight in and let's type out our first class. So we say class, here I'm gonna say cube, and here I'm gonna put object. Now I don't wanna to get too deep into why you need to put object there. You only need to put this parentheses with the object in here for um, things that are Python 2.7. So if you're using Python 2.7 and you're creating classes, you wanna put this uh, there for your first object. Okay, but if you're using Python 3, you actually don't need to add that at all. I'll get into why in a later video, but safe to say for now, let's just leave that as is, okay? So the next thing we need to do is def init underscore underscore, and then self. So what does this do? Well, we're actually initializing this class. So you can think of this class keyword here as a way to define a template. So think of it like a recipe card. So if you wanted to cook something and you had a recipe card, what happens when you go through the recipe card is you end up you know, with a dish at the very end. When you go through and you perform the recipe, you end up with a dish. So what happens is this is actually the process, the first step in creating the object. It's just running through, this is like this set of instructions, you're initializing the object. So by the end of the initialization, you have a dish you have an object, okay, or what we call an instance. So it's an instance of this particular object. So if this was um, a recipe card, so this would be like bolognese. I think I spelled that wrong, but let's just go with this, bolognese. So if this is bolognese, and I run this, by the end I have a bolognese dish, <laughs> you know, I have a dish um, of bolognese. I don't know if you just eat bolognese on your own, but that's basically what that is. Okay, so I'm gonna just say cube here. What I can actually do is I can go cmds.polycube, there. And of course, I mean, first thing I need to do is actually import maya.cmds as cmds, okay? So now what happens is, if I run this, nothing will happen. Because much like a function, we actually need to call it. So I can say, cube like this, so we're calling this cube. So what's happening is, now we're gonna create a cube when it's run, because when we call this, it's gonna look for the template, and it's gonna run through the initialization, which is underscore, underscore, init. This is built into Python, so this is, um, yeah, this is actually what Python looks for, this underscore, underscore, init method, is what we call it, or magic method, because it's got the two underscores, it's magic. It looks for this magic method, and then it runs whatever's underneath there. So we just created a cube like that, okay? Now this cube has nothing to do with the cube that we just created, just so you guys are aware. I can, you know, yeah, it has nothing to do, because it's just creating, it's just running a command. It's like saying print hello, you know? It's not being stored anywhere. It's not, um, you know, it's not tied to this object in any, any sort of way. But what we can actually do is tie it to the object by storing this attribute. So I'm gonna say self.cube is equal to cmds.polycube. Okay, so what's happening here is when we run cube, it's gonna run init, and inside of init, it's gonna create a cube. And then when it creates a cube, I wanna store the result inside of an attribute that's tied to this object that gets created. Okay, so it's tied to the result instance, the resulting object. That's why we do self.cube, because what self refers to is, self refers to the object that gets created after running this entire template. So I can actually say foo is equal to cube. So what this does is, once we create a cube, it stores a copy, it stores a reference to this cube object that just got created, inside of this foo variable, 
And inside of that cube that just got created, we actually store an attribute is what we call it. But it's really just a variable that's inside of the object, but it's known as an attribute. So we store an attribute with the result of this. Okay, so it sounds a little bit confusing, but let's just run this code and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. So run it, same thing happens, we just create the cube, but now we've stored this cube, this object, inside of foo. So I can say foo and run that, you can see we get this cube object that we just created, right? This cube object there. And that cube object isn't the same as the cube object we just created inside of Maya. So the cube object that we just created inside of Maya is actually stored inside this self.cube. So we can access that. So I can say dot cube, because when we run this template, self can mean anything really. It's just referring to the object that would get created in the future. And once it gets created, we've stored it in this foo now. So now instead of self, we can refer to this object as foo. So I can say foo.cube, run this. And you can see we get the result of what we get when we run polycube, which is a list of um, objects in there. So we have the transform of the cube cube one, and then we have polycube one, which is polycube one there. And we can also just do something like that. Instead of storing polycube one, which I don't really care for, I can just say, I want to access the first uh, item in the list, which is the transform, and then store that inside of this attribute instead. So let's delete that and run this one more time. Run, and now when I run this last line, you can see we're getting just pcube one back, which is what I want. So this is a cool way to create a class and actually store data inside of the class, okay? So to understand a little bit more about classes and objects is everything in Python is an object, okay? And classes are a way to just create objects. So for example, if I have a string called Bob and I run it, you get nothing, you just get the string, right? Pretty standard, but I can do something like dot upper. And why does this work? Well, this is an object. This is an actual Python object. It's a string object. And string objects have functionality tied to them. You can run these methods, which are tied to these objects, which actually, you know, do something. It has some functionality. So when I run this dot upper, you can see it returns an uppercase version of Bob. Okay. So what we can actually do inside of Python is use something called dir to inspect inside of this object, what kind of functionality is available. So I'm inspecting the string object and you can see we have tons of functionality. We have capitalize, we have encode, decode, all this crazy stuff. You can even count, you can count the number of, um, you know, letters or objects that appear in the string, it has so much functionality tied to it. And that's why classes are really cool because you can create an object and tie your own custom functionality to this object which I won't get into today. I just wanted to show you guys how you actually create a class. It's just by saying class keyword, and then we give it the class a name. We always want to use capitalization for the, um, the class name. It's just a very common convention in not just Python, but many other coding languages is to use capitalized uh, letters um, for a class name. And finally, we just create this cube and store it inside of itself. So nothing special there. So yeah, this is a really quick rundown on uh, classes. And just to show you guys, we can also run dir on the class that we just created, this object, the instance that we just created. And you can see we have our little cube attribute that we defined there, as well as all these double underscore things, which are known as magic methods, which you guys don't need to worry so much about. You can just ignore it for now. For now, what matters is cube because we've created this cube variable. And you can name this whatever you want. It doesn't have to be cube. So you can call it like Jack if you wanted to, or human or something, you know, it doesn't really matter. But usually you name the class something that makes sense for what it actually is. And in this case, we're actually creating a cube when we run this. So, And yeah, I think I'll leave it at that for this. Nice and quick, short and sweet little introduction to classes get a little bit deeper in the next video about why you want to use classes, how you can expand on the functionality rather than just creating a cube. How can we do things like if we wanted to translate the cube, we can build some sort of method that allows us to do that. 
as well as do other cool things like store other variables um, inside of other attributes, I mean, inside of the class, as well as utilize them inside of this command. And yeah, show you guys a little bit about inheritance and class inheritance and when and why you want to use them and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, make sure you guys stick around. Mm -hmm.